Hello there, welcome back to my channel. It's that time of year where it's time for me to round up all of my favorite products of the year. And as I was doing that, I always like to incorporate many of those products, as many as possible, into the makeup look that I wear for filming those videos. So I thought this year maybe I would get ahead of the game and actually just film me getting ready to film those videos. So you can see exactly what I put on, how I use it, you can see the products in action. So that's what we're doing. I don't have a specific look in mind. I do have a beautiful new top that I'm gonna wear, so that has kind of helped me narrow down my color choices for today, but we're just gonna be getting ready and using a lot of my favorite products. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. Beginning with the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. This product seems to be a little difficult to get your hands on, but I repurchased this this year. It has been a long time favorite and it is one of the best eyeshadow primers in my opinion. And today I've decided I need to get myself put together because I am starting off a little later than normal. And so I'm going to just prime my lids. I'm not going to apply any concealer to them. Now, while that sets, let's go to foundation. One of my top favorite foundation combinations this year has been the L'Oreal True Match Foundation plus a little bit of the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. Right now I'm kind of in between summer and winter shades, so I'm just gonna do a combination of W2.5 in the True Match, and I think just a tiny little smidge of the 475 in the Infallible Fresh Wear. All right, I think that's going to be pretty good. I do have a little bit of Sunless Tanner on right now. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 113 brush. This is a flat paddle brush. This is like old school makeup technique, but I have really been enjoying doing this because I feel like it allows me to feather out the product, kind of create a nice thin layer everywhere. And then I can go back with my BK Beauty 101 brush and tap in coverage in, ooh, got a hair there, tap a little extra coverage in areas where I feel like I need it. But this just, helps me get the thinnest layer of foundation possible. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit on this BK Beauty 101 brush and just kind of press it in kind of to the center of my face where I have a little extra redness or some scarring here on my cheeks. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna let that sit for a while and unfortunately you're gonna have to stare at my really dark circles <laughs> under the eyes because we're gonna do eyeshadow before concealer. So the palette that I chose to use today is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. I have used this a couple times on here, but there's a couple shadows, in particular this one, that I have not used much, and I think it's gonna go really well with what I'm planning to wear today. So we're gonna start off first with the shade next to it, which is called Fair. I'm gonna use the Sigma E50 brush. Just put a little bit of that under the brow. Sometimes I feel like this shade is maybe a smidge too dark, and then other times I feel like it's okay for under the brow. We'll see how it works in once we get the rest of our eyeshadow on. In the crease, let's start off with this shade right here, which is called Mesh. And I'm gonna use a rougher number 16 brush. This year, I was so blessed to be able to receive the entire line of rougher brushes and I have just really been enjoying them. I still love obviously my BK Beauty brushes and Sigma brushes. I think there are a lot of great options out there, but I have really enjoyed the versatility and the shapes of a lot of the brushes that rougher has to offer. And so I'm just gonna put that through the crease just to give us something to blend into. Okay, for now we're gonna go in with this shade. I might add a little pink later, but we're gonna go in next with the shade Tender. I'm gonna stay with that same brush because I want this to be really diffused. I don't want to get too much color in here at the moment. Okay, 
And then I'm gonna clean off that brush really well. And I am gonna go in with a little bit of wit right here. Same brush and just go above the crease. And this is just gonna help for because I have warmer skin tone. These cooler shades sometimes can end up looking a little too harsh. And so I like to just add a hint of some warmth there above the crease. And then go back with a little more of tender and mesh. So I'll dip in mesh and then tender and just blend until I feel like I have the right mix there. Next, let's go to the lid. I know I'm skipping a few steps because I wanna see how this looks all by itself. So we're gonna go in with filigree and I am going to apply this with my finger. You can see it is a beautiful shimmery taupe with some gold sparkle. It's so, so pretty. And I feel like this is almost a well, I'm gonna use it all over the lid pretty much, except for the inner corner. I'm going almost to the outer corner. So we're going to make this the main color of our eye look today. And I am going to take this right up to the crease. Now, because it has shimmer, I don't wanna bring it into the crease, but I'm going to now take my other brush and just blend over the edge. So that's why we started off with that slightly cool shade through the crease just because I wanted to have something for that shimmer to fade into. All right, and then on the outer corner, I'm going to take the rougher 01 mini brush and go in with this really beautiful color called Silhouette. And it's really more of like a dark berry brown. And I'm just going to add a tiny little touch of this here and then we'll add some liner and it'll all come together. Okay, now right before liner, we're going to add a topper shade. I'm gonna go in with this one right here. It's called Sheen. And this really does just provide kind of a wet gold sheen. And I'm going to focus this right on the center of the lid. So as the light catches, it just brings lightness and brightness. You can see hopefully a difference between the two eyes. I was tempted to bring in one of my favorite liquid shadows or cream shadows, but I think we're going to leave it there for the moment. Okay, we need some eyeliner and some new favorite eyeliners that I have been using for the last about month and a half or so are from Dalton. These are self-sharpening liners. So what that means is with the case on, you need to turn at least twice. You'll hear it click twice, and then you have a freshly sharpened point. I'm going to use, let's see, bronze on the lower lash line, just out of the way across, and then just smudge it in. These are super smooth. They're long wearing, I don't know, I've really enjoyed these. And then here on the outer edge, I'm going to do that technique where I pull out the line just a little bit, and then we'll enhance it on the upper lash line with our liner up there. On the upper lashes, I'm gonna use the shade Coco. Now bronze has just a hint of a pearl, but really, I mean, you really can't see that when it's on the eyes. I just think it's a slightly lighter shade. Now Coco is a very, very deep, dark brown, and it's so pretty. And I just find it less harsh than solid black, or I should say than a deep black. All right, and then here, going to connect and I am not being precise at all just kind of bringing that liner towards the lash line I'm going to go in super close to the lashes from halfway point in I'm going to take the 208 brush from BK Beauty and just Pull that out before it has a chance to 
dry and set. So now we have this super fine wing there. I love it. Okay, let me do the other eye. Okay, we're gonna leave the inner corner blank for now, but before we clean up under the eyes, I'm gonna add one more touch just through this part of the crease. I'm gonna go in with the smaller, this is the 13 Max from Ruffer, and I'm gonna do a combination of this and this. So a combination of wit and mesh, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of some warmth right there. There we go. Time to clean up under the eyes. I'm just using Now Solutions Almond Oil on a Q-tip. This just adds a little bit of hydration while at the same time removing excess makeup. But almond oil actually is one of those carrier oils that sinks in and soaks into the skin rather quickly. So unlike coconut oil, which can remain pretty heavy and can actually break down your eye makeup <laughs> throughout the day, I feel like almond oil soaks in and obviously you don't want to leave a big old pool of oil down here, but see how quickly that soaks in. You don't have any massive sheen under there, but all of the excess eyeshadow is cleaned up. For concealer today, I am going to pull out an oldie but a goodie. I actually repurchased this sometime earlier this year and I forgot how good it is. This is the Tarte Colored Clay CC Under Eye Corrector and this is the shade Light Medium. You can see I have a really healthy dent in the center of it. Now, it does not take much, but this is one that I feel like when winter comes, I just need that little extra bit of hydration, but it also is just so good at color correcting. You wanna be careful not to get too much, like literally just touch your finger in here and tap it on. But sometimes I just feel like this is a little heavier duty or it lasts maybe a little longer than like the Natasha Denona High Glam color corrector, which I still love. That one I feel like is maybe a little more lightweight. And this one just has a little extra hydration. Now for concealer, I am going to use the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer, one of my big time favorites this year. I now own it in about five different shades, depending on if I need color correction or brightness. I recently picked up a light shade for winter. I'm going to blend that in with the Sephora Pro Foundation number 47 brush. Um, I like to rotate my under eye concealer brushes and my BK Beauty A506 is dirty at the moment. So this is another good one. Ah, do you see that cup? That combination is just really nice. Now I'm gonna use YP3 as just a little bit of a brightener here, in the center of the face. I'm not going to do it right here because I have another trick that we're going to do. I am going to put a little bit here. I just feel like I have some redness. And then I like to go back and just tap over that with my, my foundation brush. All right, now I definitely feel like I need a lot of sculpting today because I'm just coming off the heels of Christmas and I don't know about you, but I think I ate maybe a few too many cookies and pie and brownies and bars and yes, it's just been a big feast here. So for my cream bronzer today, most of you know, I just love my NARS Laguna cream bronzer. I use that all the time, but a rediscovered favorite from Last year, it has been the Patrick Ta. This is the, she sculpted, and it has the cream contour and then a powder bronzer. This is one of those products that people either love or hate. And I pulled it out a couple weeks ago and just was reminded how much I love this product. I'm gonna use this Dalton Multi Sculpt brush and going in, you can see I've almost hit pan on the cream portion of this. So I just like to pounce my brush in and you know, maybe it's because the tone is perfect for me right now. It, this is a little light for me in the summer, but do you see how easy that was? I mean, literally a couple taps and it's in. I have been testing out the Westman Atelier contour stick. I have a mini of that and I like it, but I don't know for the price and 
I feel like I'm getting some breakouts with that formula. I don't know. I still have to do some more testing to be sure, but I just find the value for the money being able to have both a contour shade and a powder bronzer all in one product. I just think this is a really nice formula. I think it's a great price for what you're getting. I don't know. I've just really enjoyed it. A little bit definitely here. <laughs> Need a little, you know, slimming of the face and under the chin fluff here. Get rid of that. And then I'm just going to take the side of that brush and do a quick nose contour. This is also why I love this because I feel like it's a very buildable formula. So when you use it like in the center on your nose, you don't have to worry about ending up with really dark stripes or unnatural stripes. I mean, you know, it just kind of blends right in as I turn my head. I could get a smaller brush out, but <laughs> you know, sometimes just a little bit lazy. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now I have been using also the bronzer side of this, but I want to bring in another, a different bronzer today. So, All right. Now for blush, I'm using a new favorite that I've discovered in the last month and a half, two months. It's from doll 10. These are called the doll skin genius cheek flushes. These are so lightweight. They basically just mesh right into your skin. And I have been testing out all the colors they have. I don't know, 10 or 12 colors. This one I've only used maybe once before. This is the Sangria Flush. So I'm going to use this today using the Refer 04 brush. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about this product because I have a special video coming up. January and you're gonna see me talk more about some of these products but this cheek flush is so so nice and it literally just melts right into the skin you can apply it with your fingers but I always prefer the control of a brush so and I think that is a beautiful color this one has definitely a little cooler pink tones of course, I'm going to use a couple of the other cheek products, you know, got to fit in as many of my favorites as possible, but I definitely wanted to show you this one. Like I said, you're going to be seeing it more. All right, now all of the cream products are on. Let's set the base and I'm going to use one of my favorite powders this year that I discovered, the NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder. Now this, I feel like, is a hybrid between a setting and finishing powder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link a video down below all about the differences between the two. But I, in particular, love the combination of this with the L'Oreal Foundations. I'm going to use this triangular powder puff and set the base. I love how diffused the pores and everything look with that. Now, you notice I did not set my under eye with that because I'm gonna use another new favorite, the Dalton Brightening Powder. What is this? The Dalton Dull Skin Pink Powder Brightening Treatment Powder. I knew there was brightening and powder in there. We just had to get there. Now, this is one of the most finely milled powders that I own. And even though it's a pink powder, I will have to show you a comparison in another video between all of the pink powders that I own. But this, this is it right here. It did not turn my skin like a real pink color. I feel like there is quite a range out there right now of pink powders. And this is one that's basically undetectable, but it does amazing things under the eyes. So I'm gonna take first this rougher number 14 brush. I've been doing this lately just to brush over Kind of the lines under my eyes make sure i don't have any gathering of concealer there before we set because once you apply powder those lines are set in place now i'm going to take a fluffy brush this is a sedona lace one that they no longer make but any fluffy brush will do now you will notice i don't know if you can see it on camera it's so lightweight that it's 
airy. I mean, it just, when you tap it off, there's hardly any left on the brush, which is what I love. You can even tap it in your palm of your hand to make sure you don't get too much. But I mean, it's instant, instant smoothing. Now, like I said, I have a video coming and a big surprise coming in January. So if you're thinking of buying this powder, you might want to hold off. <laughs> But I had to show it because it's one of my top favorites this year. You see how bright I look, but it doesn't look oddly pink. I love it. Let's add a little bit of highlighter. I'm going to use the What's Up Beauty Serengeti Highlighter. So beautiful. I'm going to use the lighter shade. This is Wild Acacia. And using their R201 brush, it's their highlighter brush, I'm going to go into the lighter shade. And really lightly, you just put a little bit of that on the top of the cheeks. This is such a beautiful, beautiful highlighter. And their prices are really reasonable, I think. And this is kind of a two-in-one. You can add a little bit of the pink if you wish. I think I'm going to keep it with just that lighter shade right now. Let's add some inner corner highlight. I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette. I love this shade. You could use that Serengeti highlighter shade as well, but you know me for these favorites videos. I like to use as many products as I can just to show you how they apply. And this is just one of the most perfect inner corner shades out there, I think. And then I'm going to tap a little bit of this over the edge of that Natasha Denona shadow we have on the lid just to help everything kind of mesh together. Next, I'm going to add a new favorite this year. This is the MAC Radiant Medium Golden Skin Finish. This is a bronzer. It says radiant, but it just has a very soft, subtle glow. This has a nice warm tone to it. So I'm using this as a bronzer and you can see how this just brings all of those cheek products together. I love doing this. Now this is, in my opinion, a great alternative to the Gucci bronzer if that one's way out of your price range. These bronzers, the Radiant bronzers from MAC are a good alternative, similar smoothing type of formula. Time for brows and one of my favorites that I discovered maybe around September, I think it was before I went on vacation, is the IT Cosmetics Micro Brow Universal Taupe Pencil. And I just love this. I've already purchased a second one. It is a super, super fine kind of flat tip. It's not a pointed tip like a pencil. It has a slight little pinch to it but it doesn't break off. It's a really nice firm formula, but I have had no issues with it breaking. I find that is an issue with a lot of these fine pencils. Doesn't do that, lasts really well. And the Universal Taupe shade, you know, if you've been around my channel a while, you know, I've been changing up my hair color a lot this year. I mean, you know, slight changes and right now, it's quite dark and warm and yet this still actually has seemed to work quite well and I just love that you can get those feather like strokes if you need to but you can also quickly fill in kind of larger areas if you need to more with more precision so I still love the regular brow power universal brow power the the medium size tip but this one was just a surprise favorite this year. Now just setting it with some Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. I would love to know if you say Anastasia Beverly Hills when you're talking about that brand or if you just say Anastasia Beverly Hills. I say Anastasia when it's not related to that brand, but <laughs> some of you laugh when you hear me call it Anastasia Beverly Hills, but that's how she how she pronounces it. So I feel like as a brand, I want to be sensitive to how they pronounce things. So I'm just curious if you all chuckle to yourself when you hear me say that, or if you're like, yes, that's what it is. All right, for mascara, we need to first curl our lashes. 
I'm using a favorite from last year, the Dior 3D Lash Primer and Serum. And then I'm going to use today the Gen C Spectator Sport Mascara. I opened a new tube of this not too long ago, and I haven't shown it in a video in a while. It is one of my new favorites from this year. just putting a little bit of MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot around the edge of my lips. Now for my lip color, I'm still a little bit uncertain of how it's gonna turn out or what exactly I want. I wanna play off of this beautiful kind of muted rose shade in my top here. So I'm gonna start off with the Flight 70 Chiseled Lip Pencil. This is the shade Fame. I love this. This is fully refillable, so you can just buy the refill and insert it in here. You don't have to buy the whole thing every time. It has this unique kind of chiseled point on it, thus the name, and this color is just very unique. I think it's very similar. It's it's a little more muted than this tone here, but it's like a muted medium rose shade. So let's start with that. Okay, next we're gonna start with this shade from BK Beauty. This was one of her new colors launched this year, and the shade is Confidence. So it does take a little confidence to wear this shade. So let me put this on. And then we'll mute it down. And now I'm gonna go back with that lip liner and just kind of blend the edge just a little bit. I love the combination of those two colors. At first I was like, mm, no, but once we kind of blended it in, Combined with that lip liner shade, I think it's really pretty. And then just because it's me and I love a little touch of shimmer and gloss, I'm gonna add the Tarte Maracuja Lip Plump in the shade Rosy Copper. I love this so much. Mm, so pretty. Now that we've added our really bold lip color, we can see if we need any more color on the cheeks or the eyes. And I think I need a little bit on the eyes. I'm gonna go back to our palette. I'm gonna add just a touch of this shade, which is Vogue, and I'm just gonna use the rougher 13 Max. Just going to place a little bit of this here, the outer corner. And then we can add a little bit more of our Dalton Cheek Flush Blush. We can add this right over the top of what we've got, just a little bit. We don't want too much. So just a couple little light taps, there we go. I think that brings it all together. All right, here now is our finished look. And I love how all of these favorites came together. Of course, my inspiration for my color combination was this top, but that's my little tip for you. If you're not sure what you wanna do, look at the colors in one of your tops or something that you're gonna wear, and maybe that will help you focus on your color choices. Now, I love this lid shade. That has been a previously very minimally used shade for me in this palette, but now after today, I'm gonna to use it even more. And this lip color, I know we're just really soon after Christmas, but I've been loving the reds and the rosy tones on the lips. So this is just another version of red for me and I just love it. As always, check the description box down below for a list and link to everything that I use today, as well as links to the videos of the best products of 2023. If you've not already watched those, I'll link those videos down below. I so appreciate you being here, watching my videos, supporting my channel, and I can't wait to see what's ahead in 2024. Happy New Year. Bye.